We are starting here with number 121, uh, which is the coiffure. Uh, the word coiffure just means hairstyle. Um, and if you have read the Khan Academy article already, uh, you know that um, uh, the idea of a coiffure, especially in France, would be associated with kind of uh, kind of upper upper crust upper class ladies, you know, who can spend a lot of money at the hairdressers. And what we have here is something quite different. Um, this is dry point and aquatint on laid paper. Essentially, that means it's a kind of print. Um, so if you were to just kind of identify it as a print, that would be fine. Um, I'm, I'm quite sure. Uh, so our our artist here is Mary Cassatt. Uh, so I'm trying to get this. You know what? I'm just going to hide it and see what happens. Okay. Uh, our artist is Mary Cassatt. Um, so uh, one of our few um, female artists, uh, like I've been saying, we have so many more female artists in our global contemporary section, which if you're listening to this in the year of the coronavirus, you know, we're not going to be tested on the contemporary section. So I'm very sad about that. Um, anyway, uh, so um, before we, and again, a lot of this, if you've read the Khan Academy article, will just be review, but that's fine. Um, before we get into that, I just want you to really appreciate the piece, which the more I look at it, the more I like it. Um, so we have these kind of the delicate line of the outline of the body and the delicate line to indicate the, um, uh, some volume underneath the, uh, the skirt. Um, the, the straight, lovely straight lines uh, of the um, of the chair, um, just these delicate pinks and the pattern, kind of the vegetal pattern here, which is mirrored also in the in the in the carpet, which has a peach um, color. Uh, so it's very unified, especially in terms of the color as well as in terms of the design, the lines, and the um, the organic, the more uh, organic shapes as well. Um, this, for some reason, this print, it, it, somebody asked me, why doesn't she have nipples? She does have nipples. Uh, for some reason, this image doesn't seem to indicate them, but they, they, she does, if you get a better image, have, um, you know, indications of nipples in case you're wondering why she does not have them. Uh, so, um, Mary Cassatt was deeply influenced by a visit to a show of Japanese prints. Um, and, uh, at this time in, in the 19th century, um, all over Europe, uh, there was kind of Japanese fever, uh, and, uh, there was, uh, the particular kind of print that we, that they were exposed to, that the Europeans were exposed to is called ukiyo-e, ukiyo -e, which is based on the kinds of prints that tended to at least early on depict kind of a hedonistic lifestyle. Um, some ukiyo-e prints are not suitable for school. Um, others are, others are, you know, not so, not, not that graphic. Um, but, uh, the, these types of prints were very popular with the merchant class, uh, who at that time in Japan in the early 17th century was, um, uh, was kind of growing and, be and um, uh, benefiting economically with, with a new regime in place. And so they were buying a lot of prints. Um, so uh, remember that this was an exhibit of woodblock prints that influenced her. Woodblock prints like the Hokusai's Great Wave, a polychrome woodblock print, which means it's more than one color, right? Which means there's a different block for each color that um, is printed on the page. So unlike just uh, the woodblock print that we saw with um, uh, Allegory of Law and Grace, right? Uh, which was a wood block print, but it was just black and white. It was monochromatic. Th these are these were polychromatic, so they were made with several pieces of wood. It's a very time-consuming process, um, and so I've been through that already. So you should know what a wood block print is. Um, so we want to think about how Cassatt treats the body, um, and uh, there's clearly a sense of delicacy um, here. Uh, a sense of tenderness. And I'll go into a little bit more about that in just a moment. Um, so I've pulled this from uh, the Art Institute of Chicago, which is where one of the prints is. 
there are, I think, 10 of these prints. Um, so it's not the only one that exists. Uh, so this exhibit of Japanese prints was at the uh, Ecole de Beaux-Arts in Paris. Um, and she had written, and this was all, actually, I looked at the Khan Academy article. This was also in the Khan Academy article. She had written to a friend, uh, Bertha Morceau, uh, uh, who had an ex, uh, there was an exhibition of Morceau's work uh, at the DMA last spring, maybe? It was very good. Anyway, and she said, you wouldn't believe some of this stuff. You got to come see it. Um, so the woodblock prints uh, that um, had made their way into Europe, uh, had become very popular. And I've already mentioned, this is part of the Japanese printmaking tradition known as ukiyo-e, which means the floating world. Um, so delicate lines, the tonal variation with the color. Again, I'll talk about this, this light pink and then the, the, the more, the peachier, um, uh, color of the carpet with the brown and the brown is uh, also re reflected up in the wood where the, the mirror is. Um, so this is compositionally, this is a very strong piece. Um, I also like how in the image, uh, in the mirror, the stripes of the, the couch, the chair that she's sitting on have become the same color as the, the, the kind of altered colors and uh, reflect the same color that is uh, on the wall. Um, yeah, the more I look at this, this is just a really strong piece. Um, so you might know Mary Cassatt for pieces like this. She's known for creating images of uh, mothers and children. And when I first saw Mary Cassatt's work, I was like, meh. But the more I thought about it, and, and this really hit home when I saw the Morceau exhibit that I mentioned um, earlier, uh, the women's lives were very con constricted, right? It's not like if you were a woman, you could just do whatever you pleased and walk around town and do whatever you wanted, right? Your home, your, your life was probably far more restricted to a domestic sphere. And so what Cassatt then does is she paints what she, she knows and paints what she can see. Um, occasionally you get to go out and sit by the the water and paint something, but you, they, they, women simply did not have the freedom that men had. And so by painting these, these domestic scenes that, um, that's an expression of that, you know, uh, of the, of that, uh, of that, of that limitation, but also in finding beauty in it. Um, so probably you may have seen something like this before, but if you see a mother and a child, it's, it's, there's a good shape. Well, no, it might be Cassatt. So some closer up views or some different views. I actually took these photos. Uh, this piece came through the DMA about two years ago uh, during an exhibit of the of, of American printmaking. So Cassatt was actually an American. That's what I did not mention. Uh, she was living in France, but she was an American. Uh, and so we can see here um, uh, the uh, uh, you know, the signature, right? Um, Good. So uh, it was a part of a series of 10 prints. Um, she's getting her hair ready for the day. This is not, a, it's just not having a servant to help her. She's doing it herself. Um, and so we want to emphasize the fact that these are kind of everyday themes, which, you know, again, goes along with the idea of what I talked about in terms of women's spheres being somewhat more limited and trying to use what they could, they could see in those spheres. Um, uh, but we had kind of everyday themes, but it's really quite, it's, it, it says it's spare here and it is and by spare. We mean maybe something like simple or, um, you know, not overdone. Um, so it's a very simple handling of the form. Um, and uh, again, that rose, that peach and that pink color scheme and, and how that goes along with her skin tone is really just beautiful. Uh, the nape of the neck was understood to be um, a, a very beautiful part of a woman's neck, especially in, uh, in Japanese culture, but it's true. And that, that's, why, that's why women kind of flip their hair around 
It's because it's biological that, you know, that the, the neck is, is supposed to be the uh, very attractive part of a woman's body. And so, uh, so that also may be a reference to that bit of beauty there. But again, certainly not sexualized. I know the article goes into the fact that this is, she's, not a, she's not a sexualized piece. And that makes sense because, of course, we're dealing with a female artist, not the male gaze, you know, who like to look at women often with, uh, with a different, something different in mind, right? Um, we would also say that this piece uh, exemplifies Japanese influence and the fact that we have solid forms and somewhat off balance compositions. And when I say off balance, that is in no way a, uh, a criticism, but, uh, but I mean, they are, they them like the, the figures themselves are, are not like solidly placed. You can see, you know, her arms are up, but it might be a somewhat uncomfortable position. If you've ever done your hair, uh, you know, try to put your hair up and make take a while. Your arms get tired, so there's it's it's she is and and her her head is tilted as well. Um, so we might say that she's somewhat off balance, but not in a way that makes us uncomfortable necessarily. Um, really lovely piece. I love the the straight, the vertical, and the horizontal lines here in the in the wood of the of the mirror. All right, um, that's it. Uh, thanks for listening. Okay. <laughs>